Hello everybody and welcome to your next SFML tutorial. So in this tutorial we're going to be learning about how to detect keypad presses or keypad input. Uh, so this is very useful uh, especially if you have an options menu or something because as I stated in the last tutorial sometimes uh, game Gamepads aren't configured perfectly for your type of program. So to give the users the option to configure their gamepad within the game menu to suit their needs is a is a is a viable is is a really good uh, option. Uh, so let us get right into the code. So first of all, I have my joystick function from last tutorial, but I've added three different things to it. I've added, I have a window, I have the intro music, and I have a vector 3. Notice we learn about vector 2. A vector 3 is just like vector 2 but with a Z property, right? So with a Z index or a property, whatever you like to call it. So to be honest, in this scenario, it would be, it'd be better to have a, a single array with three elements. But I'm just using the vector 3 class to show you uh show you some of the functionality or show you some things you can do with it so basically I say that if button ID X um, if they press that button the first button then they therefore they play the music if they press the second button they pause the music if they press the third button they stop the music that's why I put it as vector 3 because we're only checking for three buttons okay if we're checking for two then I would put it as vector 2 etc etc so uh, let me get down to our our first of all first of all we want to create uh three new variables we want to create one called options and so that's a true we want to create a counter uh and we want to set that to zero or whatever value you want to start counting at and a vector three and we're going to name a button id so we set the options to true so first of all for our updates, for our for our update functions, we want to say that if it's not equal to options, if options is false, then we update it. So since options is equal to true, then that means uh, we're going to be updating the the buttons that we're going to be using. Okay. So I what we have right here is let me erase this. So just a reminder to remind you about uh, arrays will be better, but Okay, so I say that if event dot type is equal to SF event colon colon joy button pressed. So if they press the joystick button, then we're gonna use a switch statement. And this is why I say that uh, an array will be better in this case, because normally with an array, I could just put button ID counter would be equal to uh, event dot joy button down because all of these are equal to the same thing, correct? So I'm basically repeating code. So if I had uh, an array, uh, then if I had an array, then I could easily do all this stuff in one line of code, all this switch statement stuff in one line of code. But I'm just trying to show you different things you could use with vectors. So I decided to go about this method. Feel free to interchange whichever way you want to do it. So I say if counter is equal to zero, then we set button ID X is equal to uh, the button we pressed. If counter is equal to one, then the uh, we set button ID Y to the sec to the button we pressed. And if uh, a counter is two, then we set the button dot Z equal to the button that we pressed. And each time, uh, each time it goes to this event loop, uh, the counter increments by one. And if counter is greater than two. Therefore, we set options to false, and therefore our game will run normally. So basically, right here, we're getting the button that we have pressed, and we're setting it to our button ID. So the first button is going to be the play button. So the first button we press is going to use to be used to activate the play button. The second button we press is going to be used to activate the pause button, and the third button we press is going to be used to activate the stop button. So just to show you an example of uh, how this works. So I'm going to run this program. So now I have my controller in hand and uh okay, let's see this in action. So normally you're going to want to prompt the user to change stuff or and stuff. I, this is not neatly done. There's no prompting the user. There's no anything. But notice that th there's no activity uh going on in the window. I can't do anything. Uh, if you look, the mouse pointer is in the top left corner of the screen. 
I, I can't move the mouse pointer because nothing's updating because options is equal to true. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to click three buttons. I'm going to click X, circle, and triangle. So X, circle, and triangle. And therefore, everything updates accordingly. So once I click the X button right now, it plays the music. And if I press the circle button, it pauses the music. And I can click X again in order to resume the music. And I can press the triangles button to stop the music. And there and so on and so forth. So that's a good option to have in your game so people can configure the controllers to suit the needs of your game. Uh, and you can also do these for axes too. And you can detect uh, the the like you can detect the joystick ID or whatever f from where they get the input from and etc etc. So that is it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching and bye.